Nintendo is a gigantic company with branches across the world. Naturally, it has hundreds of companies, probably thousands with whom it does business every day, from retailers to suppliers, to development partners, to legal and HR and accounting, and so much more. But some companies Nintendo is closer to than others. In this video, we're going to look at the companies Nintendo has financial stakes in and then look at the other companies that have a stake in Nintendo. Let's start by looking at companies that Nintendo has bought shares in and, perhaps more importantly, why. Firstly, Bandai Namco. Nintendo owns a 1.75% stake in the toy and video game giants. And while this is relatively small compared to Bandai's other major shareholders, nevertheless it gives them a significant interest in the company. Nintendo's most recent financial report explains, shares are held for the purpose of maintaining and developing a stable business relationship with this company, which develops software for the company's platforms. And boy do they. It's not just the games where they were the lead developers, although titles like New Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Tournament, and little title called Super Smash Bros. Ultimate certainly show their importance to Nintendo. They also frequently receive special thanks and assist credits such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, ARMS and Splatoon 3. As Nintendo expands, yes it needs to build up its own base of developers, but it's also essential that it has reliable development partners, and especially partners with broad experience across the games and toy industry. Bandai Namco, which is heavily into both video games and toys, and which has recently developed its own team just to support Nintendo, is a great trusted partner, and so this can be read as a defensive acquisition. There are three other games companies in whom Nintendo has stakes, Square Enix, Konami, and Koei Tecmo. Certainly in the case of Square and Koei Tecmo, it's notable that Nintendo has published games of theirs such as Octopath Traveler, Triangle Strategy, and of course the Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warriors titles. Koei Tecmo is another company like Bandai Namco who are useful partners in an age of escalating complexity of game development. Fire Emblem Three Houses owed a lot to them. Konami is a little more surprising given that Nintendo and Konami do not appear in recent years to have been especially close. They have released a large number of games on Switch, but then again, they released a lot of games on every console, and there does not appear to have been much in the way of recent collaboration. If anything, Nintendo kind of scooped them by courting Mercury Steam away from Castlevania to work on Metroid. However, it's not just the game development studios that are significant. Nintendo's ownership of e-commerce platform DNA signifies a much more aggressive and strategic move. Nintendo recently partnered with DNA to create Nintendo Systems, a new company I've profiled here, focusing on emergent technologies, particularly in the online space. As well as the generic rationale of building business relationships with the company, the rationale for ownership is that they are particularly working on the development and operation of Nintendo's account system and applications for smart devices. DNA is little known in the West, but appears to be quite a large company and a diversified one with footholds in healthcare support, genetic testing, diet and lifestyle apps, and more. Nintendo's 12.35% share in the company is significant and I think reflects both the importance to Nintendo of its digital strategy and also a recognition that it has historically been weak in this area. Among the rest of Nintendo's investments, many are cautious. Japanese giants Mitsubishi and the back of Kyoto, both identified as ways of preparing against business risk and maintaining a strong financial base into the future. Then there are pragmatic shareholdings such as Nisha and Sanchin Electronics who handle semiconductors and electronic components for the company, the top and printing company which provides printed materials for Nintendo. They also have maintained for several years a small holding in TV Tokyo to give them some connection if they ever wanted to branch into further media. Perhaps though the most interesting part of Nintendo's shareholdings isn't just the people they've invested in, but the fact that very little has really changed. A look back at 2018 shows many of the same names, including Bandai Nenko, Konami, Koei Tecmo, and Konami. Granted, they moved from having shares in the Japan Pulp and Paper Company to the Topan Printing Company, but in the main, Nintendo is very steady in its investments. Of course, it also has a number of companies that it owns outright. Aside from many subsidiaries across the world, support studios such as 1UP, wholly owned devs like Retro Studios and Next Level Games, and the new Nintendo Pictures, there are two companies majority owned by Nintendo but not fully owned. They have a 99% stake in ND Cube and a 97% stake in Monolith Software. 
In this case, the reason is that the original directors have a tiny amount of the shares, which is fired by Nintendo, as with such an overwhelming number of shares, they have complete control, while also knowing that the senior figures responsible for the success of these companies have every incentive to stay for the long term. There are three companies where Nintendo owns a somewhat smaller stake. In the Pokemon company, Nintendo owns 32% of voting rights, with the other major partners being Creatures and Game Freak. It always saddened me a little because I think a world where Nintendo had a much more significant stake in the company would lead to vastly improved Pokemon titles, although perhaps they would not have been as interested and successful in monetizing the broader aspects of Pokemon's business empire, and so Pikachu and Friends Toy and Multimedia Empire may never have been built to the same degree. Nintendo also has a 50% share of Warp Star Inc. alongside HAL. This company formally put out Kirby onto the small screen for the Kirby Right Back At Ya animated series and is now listed as entrusting management of merchandising rights, suggesting that it is still involved in various Kirby-themed licensing activities. The last and perhaps most curious of the companies where Nintendo owns a partial share is the Pux Corporation, based in Kyoto's neighbouring city of Osaka, in which Nintendo owns a 27% share. I think it's worth reading Puck CEO Hidetaka Fukai's company statement in full to get a sense of why Nintendo decided to put its money into this little-known company. Our company name, Pucks, is derived from user experience. By combining technology in an advanced way and utilising big data, the latest products and services have more functionality than before. Especially in the software industry, open source and publicly available application programming interfaces are rapidly spreading out. Therefore, simple pursuit of high functionality and cost reduction may hardly reach satisfaction. Not only high functional products or services, but user experiences, which provide excitement and surprise, is, we believe, the next generation's value added. We, Pucks, are aiming at realizing user experience, mainly in the human sensing area, with our expertised image recognition technology. We extract information from images and videos which used to be merely visual before, analyze them and visualize the results so that our customers can experience discovery and surprise and use it for a variety of places such as shops, offices, homes, amusement spots, etc. To make society comfortable, we contribute through developing software. So Pucks has technology centered around facial recognition and also tracking up to 50 people from within a single image, even at multiple angles. This is to help with digital media services, they say, driver monitoring and retail. Sounds like an ideal hardware partner for Nintendo if Nintendo wants to incorporate more complex eye tracking, facial recognition and spatial awareness features into their future consoles. Well, that's what you might think, but Nintendo's annual report says of them only that they are entrusted development of software. That might have been the case long ago, but the only credit Pucks has on any game from Nintendo is We Fit You from 2014. It seems plausible, therefore, that, like Warpstar, this investment is mainly a legacy of previous business moves that is now largely discontinued, but it's nevertheless interesting that Nintendo thought highly enough of Pucks that they were willing to make a significant investment in them, and the type of technology they produce could certainly be of benefit for Nintendo going forward. It will be worth noting if the description of their relationship ever changes from simply mentioning software to anything more generic, which could suggest that the relationship is being tapped for hardware. And indeed, if there's any indication of Pucks having a longer lasting relationship with Nintendo through future games. Okay, so we've looked at who Nintendo owns or owns shares in, but the other side of the coin is equally interesting. Who actually has shares in Nintendo and voices on its board. A quick survey of the directors reveals, of course, a number of key figures we've come to know and love, including Nintendo Direct star Shinya Takahashi, President Shantaro Fukawa, and, of course, the inimitable Shigeru Miyamoto. But some of the senior directors of the company have also other interests, and that's only to be expected. Company directors should be diversified and should be able to bring broad perspectives to a situation. For example, Asa Shinkawa is a partner at the legal firm Nishimura and Partners, as well as a visiting professor at the University of Tokyo Graduate School for Law and Politics. More pertinent to Nintendo's entertainment wing, there is Chris Maladandri, the founder and CEO of Illumination Entertainment, whose long-standing partnership with Shigeru Miyamoto gave us the Super Mario Bros. movie. This did not seem to affect Nintendo's choice to partner with 
Abby Arad for the forthcoming Zelda movie, but it does give them a person on their board with deep experience at Disney, at Fox, and at his own company of the American and indeed international film and television business. Nintendo's announcement of the Melandandri appointment read, We would like to nominate him as a new outside director with the expectation that he will appropriately supervise our company's management from an objective perspective, while providing valuable advice to our organization based on his broad experience and insight gained as a leader in the field of entertainment. Our current group of outside directors consists of experts such as lawyers and accountants, and as members of the Audit and Supervisory Committee, they contribute to enriching the audit and supervisory system of our company through their broad insight into our corporate management. However, Mr. Maladandri is expected to be nominated as an outside director who will not serve as a member of the Audit and Supervisory Committee. Now, Nintendo's major shareholders are also worthy of note. In other words, he brings experience that nobody else at the table can bring. Nintendo's major shareholders are also worthy of note. Many of these are not surprising or wave-making, being mainly a list of the most famous banks in the world, and particularly in Japan, the Master Trust Bank of Japan and JP Morgan being by far the company's two largest shareholders, although the government of Norway also holds a 1.64% share from shares purchased for its sovereign wealth fund in 1998. Saudi Arabia's National Public Investment Fund also has a share, but in the main, it's a fairly dry spread. However, what's really striking is the number of treasury shares the company has. Treasury shares are shares that the company owns which don't carry voting power and don't pay out dividends. Currently, just over 10% of Nintendo's shares are treasury shares, all the more since Nintendo's 2022 buyback. For context, Apple, Sony and Bandai Namco have less than 1% treasury shares. Now, having a lot of treasury shares limits the supply of existing shares and therefore drives up the price, but it also helps to protect Nintendo. The games industry is always abuzz with talks of companies buying other companies, and in the wake of Disney's serial acquisitions of Pixar, Marvel and LucasArts, there was a time that as Mickey's eyes looked around the entertainment landscape, Nintendo seemed like an ideal target for the ravenous rodent. After all, Disney has its fingers in many pies, but it has yet to really have its own stake in video games. I realise the consensus now is that this is just the stuff of dreams, but in 2023, new guidance was issued by the government of Japan to promote what it called economic vitality in the private sector, in which desirable mergers and acquisitions were promoted, and 2022 was in fact a record year for these international mergers and acquisitions. Now, there are a lot more guardrails than just the buyback that stopped Nintendo being the victim of an aggressive takeover, and thankfully that doesn't seem to be on the cards at the moment. Nintendo has been asked about this a couple of times over the last few years, and they have a stock response. Shantiro Farakawa has said, We have not adopted what are generally called anti-takeover measures. However, in the case that we face a hostile takeover that would damage the value of the company or the common interest of the company's shareholders, we do have systems in place, both within the company and in connection with outside experts for such an occurrence to take all legal and appropriate steps against it, even if we have not proactively Put preventative measures in place. Going forward, we will continue to investigate how we would respond to a hostile takeover. Still, in a world where gigantic transnational corporations are becoming ever more powerful, I think the large number of treasury shares still tells an important story. For me, it's striking that for Nintendo, their very best owners of all may be themselves. Please check out more of my forecasts with the videos on screen, including this playlist on Nintendo's financial situations. Otherwise, Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon for another Nintendo forecast.